Well, thank you for that. Thank you, Katie. It's it's fun. Um, I feel super privileged that you invited me onto this. Um, Katie and I have definitely become good friends. We've bonded. We've had some really good conversations and talks. She's an incredible leader. And you guys are super lucky to have her um, leading you guys. And she's a great example of what to do in business, what not to do, um, how to stay in momentum, get into momentum, all that, all those kinds of things. So, and it's fun that she actually asked me to talk about something other than FFM. <laughs> so thank you for that. Um, it, it's fun every once in a while I have a topic. It brings me back to being in the field, you know, the days of network marketing and, and going through what you guys are going through. It's super fun. Um, but right now is a it's a it's an awesome time to be in queue, wouldn't you guys agree? Um, we have a lot of really good things going for us. Uh, momentum's up like crazy. Um, people are making unprecedented amounts of money. Um, people are getting back into health, their health. I mean, I had one of my uh, somebody that I actually went to church with come over to our house the other day and I got to give them a bunch of product to try and they're so grateful and it's fun to see people's lives change not only in the comp plan but within health um, and also with money and finances it's really really cool so um, really how do we capture all the momentum but then how do we stay in momentum and then the if momentum ever dies how do we ensure that we can always stay in momentum um hold on yep close the door kids did you guys hear that <laughs> slam my door i need a bigger lock <laughs> that's all i have to say um but what was i what was i saying staying in momentum right um we want to be able to stay in momentum with all this and first of all in order to really understand momentum and what it is and what we're even dealing with right now i think it's important to realize that there's a couple different types of momentum you know there's company momentum we're definitely on fire with the company momentum part right we are burning the midnight oil we are bringing out new products we're expanding like crazy uh when hemp re hemp launched a couple years ago it was just off the hook that was the first explosion and then oddly enough through the pandemic okay the company went like this it was crazy because people were wanting to make extra money and be healthy so we definitely have company momentum on our side right now Okay, the other type of momentum that, that there is, is that there's team momentum. And you guys may be a beneficiary of that. I mean, and, and you know, Katie could probably speak to this, but sometimes teams get into momentum and because you're a part of a team, you get to ride that wave. And it's like this vacuum effect where you get sucked in and you rank up just for being a part of the team. We're experiencing right, that right now across the company where people are literally, just for being a part of a team, they are ranking up in our company. And that's great, but we weren't responsible maybe for that personally. The most important one and the only one that I think matters is personal momentum. You have to get to a point in your life and in your network marketing career where you could say, drop me in any state, any country, put me in the middle of nowhere, insert me into a city, and I could go start from scratch and build a massive distribution network. Are you confident enough to say that? I think me and Jake, we've um, really been a part of two big companies, we had a one like oops in between our two big companies that we were a part of. But every single one of those that we were in, we started from scratch. We literally built up a massive distribution network and exploded and we created, we were the creators of the company momentum and the team momentum because of our personal momentum, it set everything in place. So I'm confident enough to where if for some reason Q went down, me and Jake could seriously say, we're good. We can start over. But have you guys gotten to that point yet in your career? And for some of you, you might be a day in network marketing. For others, it might be nine, 10 years. But are you confident enough to say that? And how you get there 
And how you get that confidence is staying in phase one and learning how to not just write out personal momentum or team momentum or company momentum, but how to become a creator of momentum. Wouldn't that be a cool feeling to be like, I created that wave that just happened, right? I was responsible for it. It feels so cool. So for those of you guys who didn't catch the wave to momentum training that I did the other day, there's four phases of really of our lifespan that could potentially happen. And we hope that nobody ever gets to phase four. We hope that everybody um, always stays in phase one. But when you very first join any company, right? It's like you, you've been reborn, you're excited, you have no fear, right? You will do everything, you're creative. It's like all the juices are flowing and it's fun and exciting. You're meeting new people, you're talking, you're sharing product, you're, you're testing the product out, you're feeling great. You have all this blind trust and faith. You're, you're excited to just learn as you earn. You're like, I don't need all the details. Just help me get going. I'm so excited, right? And you're talking to people and you're recruiting and you're bringing them in. And that's a really good feeling. And that's the phase that we want to stay in. It's how do you stay in? But the moment that you stop talking to your own personal contacts, you start slipping into other phases where you start to maybe manage people. Maybe you're the manager of the manager. You think you try to think, gosh, you know, I recruited some people and I ranked up, but now I'm second guessing how I actually did that. So maybe I need more knowledge, right? And then we're guessing and we wonder how did it happen? How did we do it? And we try hard to recreate things. And then we start putting out all this material to try to train our team and we're dousing them with all this stuff and they're like choking because they're like ah, I just want to go recruit right and we start suffocating people and we slip into more and more of a management mode and eventually we start we can't figure out how to get back into that personal momentum again so we phase out we create blame excuses it's not for me I guess I'll just go back to my job right so staying in phase one, I think phase one is the most exciting phase, but it's also the scariest phase, right? Um, fear can set in. And how do you stay in phase one? So here's what happens to a lot of people. They get in, maybe they recruit some people, they have a little bit of success, and then they plateau. And at that plateau mark, that's when our mind can get a hold of us and we start maybe second guessing things, maybe fear sets in. See, what you have to understand in network marketing is that people that, um, the people that got you to, let's say, elite are not going to be the same people to get you to bronze. So what happens a lot is somebody will race, they'll get to elite, they get so excited. And those people, they start like, writing them. They start managing all those people. And I'm like, oh, I'm at elite. If I just manage everybody, then that is going to get me to bronze. Or no, not all the people that got you to elite are, are going to do this forever. They might die off. They might go do their own thing. So if you want to be in control of your own paycheck, you have to go back to the drawing board and say, okay, some people, this is for the long-term. Some people it's for the short-term. I personally want to rank up to bronze. So what do I do? I can't force my people to recruit. I have to lead by example, right? So I have to go recruit somebody new. And it's the hardest thing to do when you've hit a rank and you've kind of plateaued. It's so hard to go back to that phase and pretend like you're brand new again and go start recruiting. And that's where sometimes we even default to maybe going to social media and we're like if i just do a ton of stuff on social media and make all these posts and that's going to help me rank up or somebody's just by default going to contact me directly you guys in this if you're really good at recruiting and in this phase and if you're stalled out or stuck or you've plateaued in any way i'm going to tell you social media and posting is not the way to get a good recruit you're gonna to have to go back to your list and say, okay, I've got all these people that I know. I need to call them directly and have a conversation. Hey, friend, how have things been? 
haven't seen you in a while. It's crazy. Or maybe you've seen him with a mask on, right? Hey, you know, I actually aligned myself with some really successful people through COVID. It's crazy. They're helping me make all this money. Would you be open to, to look, are, are you open to other ways to make money? Do you want to see what we're doing? I told them all about you. They're actually excited to meet you. When do you have 20 minutes? Let's talk, right? And for some reason, that conversation is so hard to have because it's so vulnerable. Where if we really understand this whole process, okay, I want you to envision, and you've heard this before, it's a numbers game, right? But what does that really mean? If, if you were to create a list of 100 people and we were to line all of those 100 people up in a row, right? And all you had to do was say, are you open to making extra money or not? Do you want to make some extra money or not? Yes, no, yes, no, sort, 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 sort. If you truly contacted those hundred people and just got through the list as fast as possible, you'd be a black diamond. But do you know what sometimes happened to us is that we start going through this list and we never know who's going to say yes and who's going to say no. And if we get too many no's in a row, we rip up the list. This doesn't work. We crumple it up. We throw it away. Say, I got 10 no's in a row. How are these people doing this? This is stupid, right? And like our confidence goes down and we doubt the whole system when person number 11 could have said yes to you. So everybody's cards are different. You might get 40 no's before you ever get a yes, where your friend may have gotten three yeses in a row, right? And she's all high on it, right? And then maybe the next 20 for her were no. All of you guys, the number's going to even out the same if you get through the list. So how do we get back to that? Or how do we encourage ourselves to do it? I think that number one, you have to have a burning red hot desire of why you're doing this company. Some of you guys may have joined just on a whim because your friend asked you to do a favor. Hey, sign up, you know? Some of you guys have really maybe have dissected the comp plan and the product and everything. You're like, oh my gosh, I need this for my family. But what happens is we, we again, we get in, we're really excited, okay? We're in phase one, we might plateau or maybe we have a bad month that's totally unrelated to Q. Maybe we get in a fight with our marriage. Maybe something happens with the kid, right? Maybe something in our job totally sucked. It knocks us out of the box, we plateau and we don't want to recruit anymore, right? And all of a sudden what happens is we start convincing ourselves that our why, oh, psh, that, that would have never happened. That was so far-fetched. My dreams, uh, you know, it, it would have never been a reality. That's for everybody else, everybody else, but it's not for me, right? We might become comfortable and you, and you might internally be saying, I'm totally not comfortable right now but mentally you've convinced yourself that you're comfortable with your situation, right? It is what it is. So I'm just gonna pretend I'm comfortable, it's okay. I don't wanna go back to phase one and recruiting. So, and my why doesn't really matter. Success is for everybody else, but it's not, it's not for me. You have to have a burning hot red desire of why you're doing this business and you cannot let go of it. And it has to be plastered everywhere. And you have to share this with people, upline, sideline, downline, whatever, and they have to be the ones to remind you of it. So the moment that you get knocked out of the box, the moment that you plateau, the moment that something tries to mess with your head and say, you're not worth this, or you could never do this, you go back to that why and they remind you of it and say, listen, you're a couple of no's away from a yes. Let's just go back to the drawing board and let's talk to some people, right? Let's just, who else do you know? Who have we not thought of yet? Who could you put me on the phone with today? A good mentor and a good leader will always help divert you back to that why. Um, when I used to launch people, I would you know, go through the launch with people and they would talk about their why and their dreams and their goals and everything. I would personally write down why they're doing this business and their goals in my little planner, right? And whenever they would get mad, I would bring that out and I would remind them, here's why you're doing this, <laughs> right? And here's where you were before and here's where you are now. Do you really wanna go back to that? 
What's worse, getting told no by some of your friends or family members or people that you know, or staying in the yuck of where you are right now? And so I'm going to tell you, it doesn't take talent and network marketing. You guys have heard this all the time. Our mind tells us that, oh, we must need to be smarter, or maybe they had more knowledge or they know more people, whatever. You guys, it's not about knowledge, talent, experience, a degree, what type of job you have. It's about you talking to the most people, the fastest and with the most excitement and conviction. Okay. And when you recruit, you guys, people have to be afraid that if they don't join you, they are missing out. You have to be so planted with your flag, right? That they are scared not to join you. And some of us, as we recruit, we're so scared and we have no power and people sense that, right? And they're like, well, you're not, you're not the strong person I want to follow. Right. So if you can, and I told this to Katie, she's like, I need, I need that boost of confidence. And I hope that it's okay that I say this. And a lot of times when we're wanting to be confident, we imagine a time that we were really confident. Right. And we're like, I want to go back and be that person when I was 24 or 26, or when I was a newlywed or whatever it was in your time. But it's like, does that confident person still exist? No, that was 10 years ago. You have to find your new confidence that you have to now, now as a person. And I'm gonna tell you something. There are so many people right now watching you that if you can just somehow exude confidence, do you understand that people are dying to walk into your light, right? If you are a confident, happy, like just secure person right now, people will flock to you. And that's why FFM is so cool is because we're teaching people how to be so confident. They're having different conversations about money. They start radiating and illuminating all this confidence and people just start being magnetized to them. So in your life, how, how are people seeing that because of this opportunity you're changing, how are you attracting people, but how are you coming across when you do start recruiting people? when you do start picking up the phone and having conversations. And I'm gonna tell you, it's not posting on social media. Yeah, you might get some people here and there to, to ask questions or be interested or pique some interest, but what really matters is your confidence they, they hear in your voice, your mannerisms, when you reach out and they can sense that in your voice tones, right? And you guys, people do watch you. They watch you at the grocery store. They watch you when you get your hair done, your nails done. They watch you when you go to your kids' sporting activities. They watch you. And they, if they can see that you change or that you have something that they don't have, right? That light and that confidence, they'll be attracted to you. So phase one, okay? If you're struggling or you're plateauing or you just seem like you can't, pick up the phone and call somebody, right? Or invite somebody out to lunch and talk to them about an opportunity. You've got to go do something to get you excited about why you're even here. You know, Jake would joke around, but like there were times when I would have to like go do jumping jacks, like pace around the house, go for a run, go back to whatever could get me creative, right? Running is always my creative thing. And in those moments when I was high on after a run or I did something exciting, that's when I would recruit, right? Because I had no fear. Um, recruiting has to be something that's part of your daily, weekly, monthly business. It's not something that you do when, oh man, I've plateaued and momentum has stopped in my team. I guess I better go back and recruit. If you are in mass momentum right now, you recruit people and bring new people into the momentum so you never stall out, okay? If you're in kind of momentum, you need to recruit before you bomb out, right? And if you're needing momentum, then you need to recruit, okay? Here's another thing I'll tell you about being a leader and staying in phase one. A lot of times we think, ah, oh, if I could just get my team to recruit some people, I wouldn't have this problem. Anybody ever thought that? What could I do to inspire them to recruit? Why aren't they using their list? Haven't they learned? They go to all the trainings. 
You guys, if you want your team to do something, you better do it a thousand percent bigger and first before your team ever does it. If you want to see your team recruit one person, you better go recruit 10. If you want to see your team member go get one customer, you better go get 10 first. You have to lead by example. And then you have to tell that story throughout your team as you're building. I'm going to go out to um, Brittany Hitch's event in California, and I get a talk on taprooting. Well, taprooting means that you always stay as a leader at the bottom of the leg, right? And you pull and you suck the team down with all of your energy and excitement. But it's really hard to taproot when you personally don't have a story to tell about you recruiting somebody. Here you are, you're launching and you're getting a rep for a rep for a rep and you're staying down there and you're working hard. But every once in a while, you have to, to keep that going and keep that excitement going. You have to be like, oh my gosh, I had the most amazing experience. I just bumped into so-and-so at the store and we had lunch and then we we caught up and she I recruited her and she's a part of my business now. And oh my gosh, I just inserted her beneath you guys. I'm gonna go run her out to silver as fast as I can. You guys better, you guys better chase me. You're gonna have a hard time keeping up with me because I'm still going, right? And you tell this story about how you are doing what they're doing, right? You never get out of phase one because that's what's going to inspire people, okay? There's always a cursed third leg, right? Agree? If you haven't gotten to your third leg yet, one day you will. <laughs> There's always a leg that is cursed, right? And that leg is where you need to pay attention to and focus on and recruit, not just to keep it going and balance out your legs, right? But if you've got massive leaders in your other legs and they're running everything out and you're like, ah, oh, man, they're doing so well, you need to go create the story here that you're still doing the same things today that you were doing a year ago and creating stories and promoting people and progressing them through the ranks. It's the most exciting thing to do. Jake, I don't know if he's if you've ever heard him say this, but he says a new ambassador a day keeps the bill collectors away. <laughs> but it also keeps you from ever stalling out your business. And I hope that that doesn't scare you because some people will say it scares me to think that I have to recruit forever. Is this what I have to do in network marketing? Anybody ever heard that from somebody like, are you telling me I have to recruit all the time in order to make money? I'm telling you it needs to be a focus. I'm telling you if you want to really achieve a six-figure income and never have it go away, you probably should always have it on your mind. It should be a part of your daily conversation, yes. One of my biggest mentors, his name was Larry, he said this, he says, when Q but he used a different name at that point. When Q becomes conversational, you know that you've arrived. Meaning that when Q becomes a part of your everyday conversation where you can move from talking to somebody about life and kids and work or whatever it is to then here's my business and it, it turns into lunch and somebody signing up when it comes just a part of your natural everyday conversation and it flows and you know how to peak somebody naturally. And it doesn't sound like you're jumping on somebody and attacking them with Q and all this information. When it's just a conversation, you know, you've arrived. If somebody asks you, what do you do? Do you have it perfectly like patterned out to where you can say what you do and they get so excited to keep asking you more questions and then you can answer a question they're like tell me more you answer it tell me more right have you gotten to that point and if not then you keep rehearsing it and you practice with somebody until it does become a conversation right that's a really good thing to do um, on a zoom or a friday night leadership is actually practice recruiting each other <laughs> It's a good one. It needs to be able to come out of your mouth without sounding, sounding silly, right? <laughs> or like verbal vomit, as I call it. Q is actually really cool to talk about. 
So I think I've, I've taken enough of your time. You tell me, Katie, but is there any, um, did that cover kind of cover all the bases? I think the biggest takeaway for you guys, wherever you're at in your business, if you're on fire, keep recruiting. If you're plateaued or maybe you haven't gotten into that fire again, start, start today. I will tell you this, okay? There's always two start dates in your network marketing career. The day that you sign up, and the day where you actually decide to do something. So I'm convinced that there's probably even some of you guys on this call who have signed up, but you haven't had your true start date yet. So when is that day going to be where you decide to get into action and just nip this in the butt and go full bar all out massive action and you recruit the world? If you wanna change something really quickly, my, my, um, my challenge, we used to tell this to people all the time and it worked every single time. If you recruit or put pe 30 people in front of the business in a 30 day time period, you will hit six figures within the next six months. Can you guys over the next 30 day stretch put 30 people in front of the business opportunity and see what happens. It's a good challenge, right? You know Katie, what? What do you think? Jake gave us that same challenge this past Friday. So in our Wave to Momentum group, he went live in there. And um, that's what he said. He said, I'm giving you all a challenge. Exactly. Did y'all talk? <laughs> Did I, haven't even talk? Seen, I haven't even seen that line. We must be on the uh, same wavelength. Yes. For sure. Um, but that's what we're doing is that um, over, so that group was supposed to end, the wave to momentum was supposed to end after 30 days. We are now going to continue it. And that's going to be our challenge is people getting in front of and exposing 30 people in 30 days. So um, it's going to be exciting. So game awesome. on, all. times two now, not only has Jake, but also Sarah has challenged us. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good little challenge. People that people that we we had people legit do it all the time. And it was it was awesome to see. I love it. Um, do you mind if we open it up really quickly for a couple of questions? Sure. I don't know if I have all the answers, but I'll try. <laughs> Does anybody have question any type of questions as far as this goes with phase one and recruiting? You can unmute yourself or put it in the chat. I have one. Okay. Um, so you're in phase one constantly. A lot of times, like you were mentioning, we always, we tend to go into management mode. We tend to want to be helping all of the newest people. What if we bring on somebody and they just completely explode? Um, how do we continuously stay in phase one while also, can you expand on that, being able to help others? Right. Um, you kind of have to think of it as spinning plates, right? You're always going to drill out and tap root and stay at the bottom of a leg. But um, you always have to, whether it's once or twice a week, whatever it is, you have to carve out like an hour or something that you are inserting it in to either power call a bunch of people, right? Or for me, when I was very first starting, I was in the mortgage and real estate industry and all of us love to go out to lunch. So I would just make it a point that I would bring my upline leader and this is what, you know, pre-COVID, right? But now that things are opening up again, I would bring them with me and I would say, hey, we're gonna meet a new business partner. And I would always bring somebody with me to eat lunch. So I would turn lunch into this working hour and they got to listen to a presentation. So I think that you just have to be more creative about how you weave it in, right? You have time for it. It's more of like a time management thing and just making it a priority as opposed to how do I do it? It's just that you do it, right? And you just say, okay, here's my weekly schedule. Here's all of my activities. Here's all my Zoom. When am I going to pencil in an hour this week to contact some personal, some personals, right? We get so busy and it's really easy 
to manage and schedule out right for other people. And then we're like, oh man, I've got a full schedule. Like I'm good. Right. And we get so used to that, that we forget to, oh, it's one day it's going to catch up with me. I better pencil that time in. So I think it's more of just a matter of doing it and scheduling it in and not getting comfortable with all the other stuff that's going on. Like we can feel busy by just attending the Monday Zoom, the Thursday Zoom, all of these Zooms, the trainings, like presentations. But at the end of the day, did any, does this make you money? This conversation we're having? No, it doesn't. So money-making activities is recruiting. You have to include those in. Yeah, thank you. I just, you told me that last week when I asked and so I wanted them to hear it again. So, okay. Um, there um, is a couple of questions. Do you want? Yeah. So um, going back to somebody that you've peaked before, um, timing changes. And if you had somebody that you feel like, man, I would re really love to have them, but they told me no, it is totally fine to go back to them and ask them, you know, have things changed? You know, how is life? You know, last time that we talked, you were doing really well, blah, blah, blah. How are things going today? You know, and ask them and see what they say and say, well, here's what's happened in my life. You know, here's where I'm going. Are you open yet? Can we have a conversation about a business? Or, you know, are you open to product? But it's okay to see if timing has changed. Has timing changed for you? Is anything different? Um, absolutely 100% timing does change. People will watch you and you might drip on people for one, two or three years before they ever join your business. But you have to keep that conversation open until they completely 100% close it down. Mm. Um. Let's see, how do you know um, when to go from building relationships to asking if they are open? So it depends on how you're building the relationship and it depends on where the comfort level is. Um, if it's me, I love everything face-to-face. -face. I go out and meet my neighbors. I always pick different neighbors to like um, go bring like this time I picked five neighbors and I um, went and dropped off Mother's Day gifts to five random people or I'll research birthdays and I'll go surprise somebody in my neighborhood with a birthday present just to get to know them or whatever I can do to like open up a conversation, go talk to them or whatever. And usually when it comes to people opening up and talking to you about what's going on in their life or maybe an ailment or a sickness or I'm struggling with this, then that's your cue to hit the pain point, right? <laughs> um, and ask them, well, gosh, you know, it, it would really stink to lose a job or be put on furlough or not have work. I mean, are you open to other ways to make money or gosh, man, that really stinks to be in pain or not be able to sleep. I mean, are you open? If I gave you a sample, would you try it, right? So watch for that transition in a conversation when you can open that up and just kind of, well, you know, I don't know if it would work or not, or this is for you, but I kind of know some people. <laughs> can I connect you? And maybe you guys can have a conversation and remove yourself from the situation. Let me connect you to Katie and Katie will tell you all about what we're doing together, right? Um, Carolyn, oh, Katie spent one and a half years on you. Yep, see? Um, Yep, just recruited two people after two years of dripping. That's how you do it. How do you approach other people in another network marketing co company? Um, you have to know if, again, if they're open to change or if they even wanna consider. It's, it's hard, like if they're making a lot of money and they're doing well, you can't really bug them, right? But if they had a downturn or their income's gone down, again, you look for that pain point and you try to see if the door is open at all for a conversation and you can ask, right? I think that that's the biggest thing. Um, otherwise, they're just going to shut you down. Um, let me see. Favorite place to build re new relationships? I just try to get out of the house. You can't build new relationships if you're in the house. It can be at work, um, through school, through my kids' friends, my neighborhood, church, ball games, activities. 
Um, try not to be so focused on your phone when you go out. Like if you're sitting at a game or an activity, like ask, ask somebody how they're doing. Oh, who's your kid or get to know them. Like actually be the one that's forthcoming to have a conversation. Um, let's see. Hey, let's see. You have a hard time transitioning. I think that that's just fear where people wouldn't, here's the thing. People wouldn't open up and talk to you and tell you your life, their life story. You have to understand if somebody like, like a mom, for example, at a game or whatever, if they're opening up to you, they already opened, right? So you just have to know when to have to transition it and have the confidence to do it. <clears throat> Um, anything else? Did I get them all? I'm not okay soliciting my friends on social or in general. Okay, so soliciting friends. I think that you have to think of it a different way as soliciting versus like partnering. What we look for is we look for partners. And if you're an entrepreneur, entrepreneurs are all about partnering. It's all about who you know, not what you know right? Um, and it's about, and because I was an entrepreneur before, you have to remember, I had my own business. I worked from home. I was a, a mortgage and real estate professional, right? And I didn't ever consider myself a network marketer, but everybody that I knew always had their ear to the ground for the next big thing, right? If you're entrepreneurial minded and you're running your own business, you want to know where, where's the next deal? Where's the, the sweet spot? Who can I partner with, right? What other ways can I make money? That's how we always thought. And so it wasn't me feeling like I was soliciting. It was me feeling like, who do I know that would love to partner with me and make money where I could showcase a business opportunity to them and introduce them to some other business partners and they could go run with it. So I never felt that way. Um, so I would just maybe think about it in a different light to where you don't feel like you're soliciting to where it maybe feels like, gosh, you're giving somebody an opportunity. Yeah, right. You're looking for business partners as opposed to spamming people. Mm -hmm. And that was just through own, my own personal relations. People, people want to know. And if they didn't want to be in business with me, that's totally fine. We still had a really good relationship and remained friends. So hopefully that helps a little bit with that one. Okay. Well, Sarah, thank you so much. I greatly appreciate you spending your Tuesday evening with us. I know that y'all are so busy with sports and all the things and just pouring into us. I took like five pages of notes. Um, so, <laughs> <That's awesome. laughs> I have met, this is my, my business Bible. Everybody makes fun of me. It's like a total train wreck, but I can find it all. Um, but thank you again so much and um, really appreciate it and hope everybody has a wonderful week and excited to see everybody at the Memphis event. Thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you. you.